Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, if you're wondering why I have these lights out and my rack is uh, pointed out this way, well, it's because in this video I want to show you guys how to do proper AV rack wire management. So, let's go and take a look. There it is. No, I'm just kidding. This is not proper AV rack wire management. This is what we would call in the live sound world, spaghetti. Or you could call it a rat's nest, but it is not pretty. So this is what my rack looked like when I first got it down here and got it thrown together and got all the final components that I've had for a while now. And I just wanted to slap it together, get it all set up so I could start listening to movies and, and um, well, listening to music, watching movies, playing games, you know and uh, I just didn't do the best job. Bottom part looks pretty good, but the top is a disaster zone. So I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks to cleaning this up, making it look better, and just kind of the uh, basic step-by-step -step process of how to keep your AV rack as clutter-free as possible. Now one thing that uh, I'll tell you right off the bat that really helps is getting the proper length cables. So for this situation I have some cables that are pretty long like for instance the set of AudioQuest stereo cables for when I'm playing uh, high resolution music. I use the DAC inside there so I go stereo out into my receiver and it's not terribly long but it could be shorter and especially say like um, this AudioQuest um, cinnamon cable right here that's connecting my Apple TV 4K to my receiver. It's way too long. Now, part of the reason some of these cables are really long is because some of these have been here with me since the beginning, since I first got into home theater when I was in my early, early 20s. So some of these cables are 10 or 20 years old. And back then I just had a standard entertainment center, so these things needed to be, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven feet. But obviously when you have an AV rack where everything is in close proximity to each other, you don't really need terribly long cables. So you would benefit instantly by getting the proper length cable you need for your application. So if I were to do this all over again, I would have bought shorter cables, but I kept the cables that I had and only bought the new ones that I needed. So that's why some of these are just ridiculously long. So that being said, um, it's still not gonna look as perfect as I want because I don't feel like buying shorter cables right now, but I'm still gonna make it look as clean as possible. And anything is better than the way it looks right now. So let's get to work. This will probably be time lapse and then I'll stop here and there to explain what I'm doing and give you some of the tips and tricks as to how to make this look as clean as possible. So first I'm going to start out by cutting away the old plastic ties right here and uh, vacuuming out all the dust and then we'll get to disconnecting everything and then reconnecting everything but rerunning them so that they are cleaner tighter runs of cable. Here we go. Okay guys, we're back. So what wasn't shown in the last half of the uh, time lapse was me disconnecting everything and labeling everything. So I would highly recommend if you have an AV rack or even if you don't have an AV rack uh, to get a label maker or borrow one from somebody who has one and just label all your cables. Especially if you have an AV rack, if you have to swap out your cables for any reason, if you're swapping out gear to test it, or if just the cable goes bad or there's an issue with your system and you have to diagnose something by you know, going cable by cable, um, 
it's going to be very, very helpful to have everything just labeled. Even if you already know what it is, which most people do, it is easy to just be like, oh, there's the center channel cable, boom, pull it out, you're good to go. So uh, the one I use is the Brother P-Touch, and the exact model is the PT D400, but honestly, any label maker will do. And uh, you can use whatever naming scheme you want. Um, you know, you can type out the entire thing or you can just uh, abbreviate. Me, I like to abbreviate. So example would be for this cable right here. This is the, uh, I don't know if that's gonna focus. S-U-R-B-R, surround back right. But go ahead and do whatever, you know, works for you. Okay, so one tip I would like to give you guys is connecting multiple cables together that are being um, connected in the same general zone. So an example would be all of my RCA interconnects that connect from the back of my Marantz into the various amps I have. Um, you know, just getting them all tied together so it's one consistent bundle. So I'll show you what I mean right now. Okay, so these are all the cables for my interconnects that go for each channel into an amp. So it helps to get them all organized and ran out. So here's my back left right at most channels and then center Surround back left, surround right, surround back right, and surround left. And I'm just going to line them up nice and straight, like so. Get them so they're all the same distance as far as the interconnects are concerned. Hold it down with my foot temporarily. All right, another thing that is extremely helpful is you can always do zip ties if you wanted to, but those are a permanent solution. You would obviously have to cut them. These Velcro straps are pretty awesome. They are, I think, five or six inches long, and uh, you just wrap it around, and you uh, can easily undo it if you want but I'm gonna wrap it around this one. And then I'm gonna take this and wrap it all the way around. So I'm basically turning nine cables into one, sort of. And now they're all neatly together. I actually need to tighten that just a little bit. Okay, and then run down, and now halfway, I'm gonna do the same thing. Sorry, my cat was trying to get in the way. Now I'll put the link down in the description below if I can find the exact ones I got, but honestly, any uh, Velcro straps will work. And they're all pretty cheap. I think this pack of 50 was maybe 10 bucks. All right. So this is just one other thing you guys can do in your AV rack or even just your cabinet system to keep wires uh, from getting tangled and looking uh, nicer and cleaner. So. Now we're gonna get this all connected. So we're ready to get this thing connected back together and start running all the cables in a nice, neat, tidy way. And it helps to kind of plan this out in your mind before you go about doing this. Thinking about, you know, where's the starting point? Where's the stopping point? How do I get there in terms of the cleanest, nicest route? At least if you're looking at an AV rack like this. So definitely plan it out before you just start connecting everything willy-nilly. Otherwise, it's just going to look as disorganized as you had it before. 
in my rack, I decided that I'm going to run all the power cables down the left hand side and then tie them to these various points right here. And then all the audio and video interconnects are gonna run down the right side. The reason you want to do that is because all those power cables bundled up when everything is turned on and getting the maximum voltage running through them, especially if you're watching a movie and it's like one of the more dynamic, loud, crazy scenes, if it's drawing more power, there is a small potential chance that that could create a small electromagnetic field. Now, granted, there's a good chance that most of the power cables that you have are shielded, but some of them may not be. Some of the really, really cheap ones may not be. Some of the higher quality stuff from name brands, say like from AudioQuest, might be uh, much better shielded. Not saying you have to go out and buy that type of thing, but some of the cheaper cables may not have any shielding at all whatsoever. Now, the good news is, is that most audio and video cables, interconnections, they are shielded, at least if you're buying, you know, the, the middle of the range cable to the high end stuff is obviously gonna be extremely shielded, but some of the cheaper stuff that comes with your gear uh, probably has either no shielding or very, very, very poor shielding. So that's why I don't ever recommend uh, buying the absolute cheapest cables, but you certainly don't have to go and spend uh, the crazy amounts on very, very expensive cables. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, hey, I see some audio quest in there. Well, that's because I used to work at Best Buy and uh, I got a crazy deal on them. And it was basically after the deal, it was the same price as the regular cable. So I thought, why not? But you definitely don't need to go spend the money on crazy expensive cables. Now, let's get started. The rest of this video is probably going to be a time lapse. I might pause here or there to explain something that I'm doing or a tip, but the rest of this my video um, is mostly going to be a time lapse. So let's get going. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. So now I know it doesn't maybe look as organized as it possibly can be, but there's a few reasons for that. Once again, some of these cables are a lot longer than they need to be. So if they were really short, as in like one or two feet short, then I wouldn't have all this mess of extra long HDMIs around here. But this is a good way to get it as organized as possible. You just wrap them around individually, which is what I did, and then wrap them all together. So all the video cables are bundled right here. And then this is the main one for the projector. And then as you can see, all the RCA interconnects go into the amps, all running down and tying off into their individual amps. And again, my setup is a little different than most traditional setups that have an AV rack. Usually they have the speaker wires in the wall coming out of a wall plate and then just short little runs into the back. But this is not uh, my forever home or forever theater. So I didn't do in-wall wiring, couldn't do in-wall wiring. Uh, so this is just kind of the way it, it has to be for now. So in the future, it'll look much better and probably by the time I do a dream home theater and build it from the ground up to where I can have control of everything, of course I'm gonna do in-wall wiring. It's gonna terminate out of a wall plate and I'll do much shorter cables at that point. So uh, in the future, it will look much nicer, but compared to the way it looked before, this is very clean, very organized. I got all the power cables coming down this side and it's pretty clean. This side's a little bit more cluttered, but it's still pretty clean and organized. And you can clearly see the back of each component 
and it's not terribly hard to get back there and do stuff. This uh, power cable is a little overpowered and kind of beefy. I'm going to replace it with something that is not quite as thick and is a little bit longer so I can run it down this way, down here, and then to there. But um, that will have to come later. Overall, this is a much, much nicer looking, and I think I'm going to add a, a crossbar up here so that I can kind of tie some of these off to get it a little bit more organized. And maybe I'll show that in a future video. But yeah, very happy with how this turned out. It's much more clean, much more organized. So I hope this video helped and I hope this will give you some ideas of how you can do wire management in your AV rack or just in your AV cabinet. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I do home theater and audio videos. The channel is growing. My next goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers. About 90% of people who watch this content on my channel are not subscribed. So if you all just took one second and hit the subscribe button, it would help me out a lot and help the channel grow and help me to produce better content for you guys. And please hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when the next video drops. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy listening.